Hi everyone, welcome to the Rock and Round Table. My name is Shay. My name is Matthias. Today we have an interview with a very special guest, Jason Hook from the band Flat Black. Now they're releasing an album coming out very soon on July 19th. And the name of the album is Dark Side of the Brain. They're also going out on tour the same day, July 19th, 2024. You ready? I'm ready. Well, let's roll it. Let's welcome Jason Hook. All right. All right. <laughs> hey, how are you? It's you two guys. You Hi, recognize us. How you been? <laughs> good. 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 Hold on. I... Yeah. Yeah, a couple uh, local celebrities here on the <laughs> chat. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. <laughs> yeah, well, th thanks again for taking the time here. I, I know you have been doing a lot of interviews, so we're just super grateful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm so relieved to be at the point where I can, um, you know, talk to people about the stuff, because I really didn't feel like it was worth doing interviews while we were building the whole thing you know there there isn't much to talk about other than i'm sitting at pro tools every day and writing you know working on music it's not that exciting <laughs> <You Yeah. know? laughs> no i get it i get it yeah and i mean we know i mean for today we want to talk about obviously the new album mm -hmm. and the upcoming tour and things like that i also have a few questions about your your gear since i'm i've been playing guitar mm -hmm. since i was a kid as well so right on it. Cool. Yeah, so five singles so far, right? And the album Dark Side of the Brain dropping July 19th. So <laughs> how do you feel about all the work you have been doing through the last few years, I guess? Or did you have the songs before the band was founded? Or what's the deal? Um, with, yeah. Well, I, def I definitely had a head start. Yeah. You know, uh, I have this whole facility here i don't know uh how much of it you can see oh i can but, see some yeah i can see the the sherman there <laughs> um anyway um so i'm i'm always up here working on music anyway um uh, and have been throughout the whole death punch experience i mean it was kind of the it's kind of the only thing i know is uh writing and recording and um so when it when i split from death punch i figured the next logical step would be to go back to work you know yeah and for me, it always starts with music. You know, I'm starting to, I'm just trying to write exciting, compelling, high energy tracks. And uh, I did that for a couple of years before I thought there's a lot of material here. I should probably start looking for other players and see if I can turn this into a band. But for the first couple of years, I was up here by myself, just carving away. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah and I mean, we obviously we can hear your your signature sound if you will yeah. with the really heavy riffs and the huge choruses and yeah. it just sounds amazing and so far the singles have been amazing and and now july 19th we're looking forward to that <laughs> to the album yeah. dropping the full album it's exciting me yeah. too yeah <laughs> so you haven't heard the whole record we yeah. have not no yeah. only the singles yeah got it and um, and we're gonna obviously so we we are old school, right? We always buy the vinyls, we buy the CDs, nice. and yeah, you know, we we always been like that, kind of trying to support the artists as much as we as we want to, but also because we love the physical format. Me too. Yeah, that's what we grew up with, and <laughs> you always buy uh, like I iTunes, <laughs> iTunes, well, yeah. and <laughs> obviously we have Spotify as well, and uh, yeah, we are all over the place, right? Because we want to have MP3s well, in, on a flash drive in our car and so forth. <laughs> sure. Well, I yeah. think it's uh, it's worth noting that the the physical stuff, the CD and the vinyl, have the f side four is live from Edmonton. Oh, really? Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so, like, no, but who does that? Right. You know, we really did the live album first. <laughs> <laughs> well, was that from the the Godsmack tour? Yeah. Okay. Well, so what happened? You know, we um, we talked about doing a, a, a vinyl, and there was too much material to fit on a single vinyl. So they were like, "It's going to be a double vinyl." But the problem is, there's not enough material to make 
uh, like we're if you spread out the whole record on four vinyl sides, it yeah. ends up being two to three songs per side, which I thought was lame. You know, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's really weird, right? You know, so I said, let's do this. Let's compress the album onto three sides, and then come up with some bonus content for side four. And they were like, awesome. you know, I've got leftover tracks. I've got extra songs that weren't used on the record. But they're like, did you record any of the shows? And I'm like. Yeah, I did. I <laughs> multi-track. I multi-track recorded the whole tour, so I went through like a handful of songs and and picked one of the ones I thought was better than the others and uh, mixed it all up. And uh, that ends up being side four, live from Edmonton. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, and that's yeah. also added value for the fans, right? When they well, yeah, because you can only get it on the physical. So right. you know, I, I mean, I know nobody buys records anymore, and I get it, but. I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why the hell not? And and those the the physical format comes out October, right? October twenty fifth. Yes. Yeah. It's funny because somebody was asking me this morning. I had I couldn't remember the day. Okay. <laughs> like I was like October something or other. There's there have been so many shifts in the release schedule that I stopped. I couldn't remember where we landed on. I know that July nineteenth is the digital release. Right. Okay. Which is just around the corner. Yeah. And uh, and you kick off the tour the same day, right? Same day. <laughs> Amazing. That same day. Yeah. I think upheaval on July uh, 19th. So we'll be playing, and I'm sure we'll be saying on stage that, you, you know, I mean, it's been a long time. I've been sitting on this record for, uh, this record was finished January of 2023. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> it's been yeah. a while. So, yeah. But we did it. We did the record ourselves. And when the record was done, it took a minute to find management. And then once management was involved, then we shopped it around to the record labels and got signed to Fearless. And all that takes time. Yeah. And then we were meeting with Fearless. Fearless was like, well, our, we would like to do, we like to put out records like sort of October or summer, you know, like either right before Christmas or in the mid or, or summertime. Yeah. And I'm like, well, we're, we're too late for October. So the only other option is summer of 24. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, patience. It's been a patience game, you know? Right. You know, I totally get it. And, and I mean, I wanted to ask you, so w once yeah. you have recorded your, your everything is done, everything is mixed and mastered and stuff like that, do you ever put it in your car or do you sit at home and listen to your own music? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I still listen to it. It's actually annoying to me because... All the songs are in a folder on my Dropbox, so I can't just hit play and have them all play. I have to like hit one and then go to the <laughs> next one and hit play and then the next one. And it's like I can't just hit play. But uh, you know, some of the other interviews I've done, they have an advanced copy of the record. Okay, and that's really that's fun for me. I'm surprised you guys didn't get that, but it's fun for me because people are talking about songs that right. I haven't talked about for four years. You know. <laughs> only i've yeah. been listening to yeah. oh you have been of course yeah no we we didn't get that i mean we're such a small channel we have i think we we're growing 3,700 subscribers today on yeah. youtube so we're, we're well, still getting good started. for you yeah that's good though i nine, think uh nine months nine ten months yeah. in, like in nine months so you're like you delivered a baby yeah. with your <laughs> yes. subscribers yeah. a newborn <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're just around the corner from the release, so I mean, everyone will have it soon here. You know, yeah. no, July we're excited. 19th. Yeah, and, and like I said, Three we weeks. we always yeah. purchase the albums, even even from our friends who we you know get CDs from or get vinyls from. We just still buy them. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and, and also obviously going to the shows. So speaking of that, I see it, the, the, there was no Las Vegas date. I know you played with Godsmack here last year. Yeah. Uh, uh, any plans to have a local show? I know you're the only one who lives in Las Vegas, right? No, no. Um, Rob and Rex are here. Oh, they are? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and oh. Nick, the bass player, he's in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, but he, I think he wants to move out here. It's just a question of logistics, when and how and where. But right. the three of us are out here ready, yeah. Oh, cool! And, and did you know these guys before you? You know, have you have you thought about no. them? When, no, okay, so all new. No, all new guys. I mean, I was sort of, I was focused on trying to find guys that were, you know, 
not from popular bands. Right. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of giving new guys a chance to get involved in something and, and skip a few steps, you know? Yeah. Not to mention, and I said this earlier on a different thing, but uh, there is a risk if you, you know, putting together some sort of super group with all these guys from big bands, the, there's always that risk that they're going to go back to their big band. You know, yeah. And fragment the thing that you've put all your energy into, which yeah. I didn't want, obviously. Of course. No, and, and I mean, watching the videos, they, it looks like a, a cool unit. I mean, you all look yeah. good and obviously sound incredibly good as well. And speaking of Rex, his voice is just badass. We love his voice. It fits perfectly with, <laughs> with the genre. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. I remember watching one of your reviews where you're like, his voice is so good. I almost, I can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> that was funny. that's what we feel. I mean, we're always trying to be honest on, on these kind of reactions we do and and just tell speak our feelings, right? And uh, whenever we hear great music, we just get excited and like, oh, shit, oh, I want to see this live. <laughs> right? I yeah. think there, there might be, uh, <clears throat> we are trying to put together a local show in Vegas. Okay. Um, I'm not sure when that's going to be, but we were did we have a we have a relationship with a venue in town, and they've been asking us if we would give them um, first dibs at a our first local show. Okay, yeah, that will be that yeah. will be exciting. We, we, we would want be to there. be there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it'd be great. Yeah, because we we go to pretty much uh, pretty much every weekend. We go to, uh, we either Vamped or BBB yeah. or Brooklyn Bowl. I mean, there's so many great places yeah, now yeah. as well. So, oh yeah, it's great. I was just at Brooklyn Bowl the other day to see uh, Wage War and nothing more. You lo that singer, you love that singer too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I look for uniqueness yeah. in vocals and things like that. Something, something that really stands out that you kind of. It doesn't have to be the best voice in the world, but it's it needs to something original about it, something unique. That's what I always look yeah, for. Yeah, me, so. me too. Me yeah. too, actually. You know? Yeah. And that was the thing with Rex. I mean, he, he his kind of clean vocals sound so good, but also the, the harshness when it comes in more. It's not growl, obviously, but th that heavy <laughs> heaviness. Yeah. In it. yeah. He, and also, he has a, no, I was just going to say, he's got, a, he's got an incredible um, toolkit, you know? Yeah, for sure. For he sure. can cover a lot of territory. And, uh, we've only just sort of cracked the surface with what he can do. Uh, I'm really looking forward to doing the album too, because, uh, you know, he's got all kinds of stuff to offer that we'll be trying to unleash on that one, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so for the second album, it, <laughs> we haven't released the first one yet, but, I know. but, but do you already have, you know, ideas, you know, lined up with, oh, yeah. with, with the members as well? So, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there's uh, I'm always recording stuff on my iPhone. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always noodling around on a guitar somewhere in the house. And so I just capture little bits and pieces on the iPhone and then um, come record time, you know, sort of work them up, go through the folder. But by that time, there's hundreds of little things. Right. So <clears throat> I don't right now. I'm more in the uh, talk about the record phase than writing and yeah, recording. Of course, I did. A, I did. I went through a marathon three years of writing and recording to get to this stage. So I'm not really in that gear at the moment, but there are a ton of leftover things that never got finished for the dark side of the brain record, mm -hmm. a ton okay. of stuff. And, you know, I, when we, when I met with fearless, we, I mean, we probably listened down to 24 songs and we sort of had our little clipboards that were like, okay, that one's good. That one's good. Man, eh, maybe save this one. Ah, eh, maybe this one doesn't fit, you know? <laughs> so there's a batch that got put, put aside. You know? Yeah. Oh, I, I understand. You are writing Maniac. You have 24 <laughs> tracks. So so will the other members help uh, collaborate finishing up some of those other tracks that for the next album, you think? Or is it all going to be you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's, it's, uh, it's a group effort, 100%. And I, want, I wanted it to be a group effort. I, I you know, the, I've got such great, I've got such great guys that uh, I think that it's, it would be a travesty to not include them, you know, and right. make no mistake. Like, you know, I work better with, with a team, you know, I mean, I, I have certain things that I like to do by myself, like guitar solos and sketching the idea originally. But, um, when it, when it comes to flat black, 
my full intention was to make it a band, a real band, you know, yeah. uh, where we toss around ideas together and we talk about them and we decide what's right, what's wrong, what do we like, what needs to be fixed. Um, when you do that with a gr group of guys that are your friends, that that's a really joyous experience. Yeah. 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 That, that, when I was in bands back home in Sweden in the 80s, I mean, that was the fun thing. Go to rehearsal and all that. Have a couple of beers and come up with new songs. And yeah, uh, yeah well, it was just a fun, fun time. And eventually, yeah. when you had a chance to play live, that was awesome. Yeah, so, I've, I've yeah. been through it all. I, yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and um, so so the writing process. So you record at home uh, in your own studio, but also for this album, you recorded a hideout as well. I know you've been there with other bands before. So do you go there because it's close by and you like the people there and you like the the sound that comes out of it, or are other reasons you like hideout? It's basically you know it's a um, it's an incredible facility um, and. We, you know, we recorded live drums on the record. Oh, okay. and and I know that. I mean, they're they're set up for live drums down there. I mean, it's like a you know, it's a full functioning pro studio with. Uh, if you're going to try to capture drums, they have all of the stuff that you need to do it properly. In my opinion, you know, yeah. you don't have to go to big expensive places to do that kind of stuff. But me being sort of a quality snob, I like to sort of like I want to start by let's go to the best place let's get the best stuff mm -hmm. let's try to get the best result you know yeah and um and that way i know that i'll never be like ah it's not i could have been better i hate that i i have to go for the best first you yeah know? <laughs> and you can hear that in the final mix so I, for sure hideout yeah, yeah yeah oh thanks yeah 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 well sure. the uh like you know the hideout the hideout just has uh you know i've done a lot of work there obviously and uh it's a top-notch facility, and it was an. It's just down the street. It's a no-brainer. Um, when I need when I need that place, it's there. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we can do a lot of stuff here at my studio, but drums. There's you know, recording live drums is an art form, and they have all these amazing microphones and mic pre's and stuff that uh, I can only wish I could <laughs> own all that stuff. <laughs> But you have the room too. Like you're also miking up the room. It's not just the kit. It you mic the room and the reflections, and you blend all that in. And so, if you don't have that room, then you're only miking the drums. And so, that's right. a big part of why people go to studios like the Ida. They're trying to capture the room as well. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I didn't know that, yeah. but that's a really good point, especially with live drums. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. But they, just as as a funny side note, <clears throat> they they have the big drum room. And there's mics all in the corners of the room because you're capturing that air. But they have a little, they have a couple ISO booths off to the side in that big room. And in one of the ISO rooms, they have a, tr a beat up trash can that has a microphone on it. And it's not mic'd up because you hit the trash can and you mic the trash can. It's mic'd up so that the drum, the, re the, the vibrations from the drumming make the trash can do a thing. And okay. then the microphone picks up that dirt from the trash can yeah. and records it. You can blend that in as grit. And it's like the coolest fucking thing. You know? Oh, I'm like, what how, the hell is this? How did someone Don't come up it. with that? Right. Well, I mean, you know, uh, Kevin, Kevin uh, Churko, you know, he's just an animal, you know, and that's uh, his place. Oh, yeah. So there's, you know, no end to the amount of experimentation that's happened over there and when <laughs> they get something that he likes it's like don't touch it it's kevin's rig you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I was thinking about i remember i was reading somewhere that uh, tommy lee when he recorded one of the monthly crew albums he wanted to have the snare sound like a magnum 44 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shooting oh. <laughs> don't we all <laughs> <You're right. laughs> let me know a secret <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> Cool. So, so July nineteenth, you're kicking mm -hmm. off the tour, and then I saw you also were announced on Ship Rocked, um, the cruise. Yeah, and um, and that's awesome. And we have many friends who go there every year. We've been going to the seventy thousand tons of metal, but we have been looking into going to Ship Rocked as well. Whenever you know, the, the time is is aligned mm -hmm. when they're not going on the same day. Well, but, I was gonna say I was gonna say you should go, but it's sold out already. I know. Yeah. I know. 
So we have to be so, on that waiting list and see if someone drops out. <laughs> no, it's a it's a really fun experience. Uh, I I can't even tell you how many times I've been on the boat with this band and the old band. Yeah. Um, but it is a hundred percent pure fun, and there's there's shows going on on deck one, deck two, deck three, deck four in the theater up on the outside by the pool outside. In the hallway, in the foyer, there's just music happening on the whole thing, and uh, oh. I like the I like bumping into my friends. You know, like I'm over the years, you sort of get to know all these people from these bands. So, you know, there's nowhere to go on the boat, so you're all just like, hey, I'll see you, at, I'll see you up at when so and so plays at five o'clock. I'll be there. You know, it's just a it's a really cool thing they came up with, and uh, yeah. I'm just so glad that we, that we're going to be on it in January because it's uh, you know my guys haven't really done it yet, so. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah. It's a good it's a experience great, for them as well to get exposure oh, yeah. for that. It's a lot of fun. Oh yeah. hell yeah! <laughs> and speaking yeah. of tours, so for twenty twenty five, so 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 many bands now they have canceled European tours because of yeah. different reasons. I mean, right? Mostly financial, right? And visas and sure. all that stuff. So, do you feel like it's worth the effort and uh, the financial risk to tour Europe the next year or something? One hundred percent. Oh yeah, percent. <laughs> Actually, uh, I'm Joe. I can't wait to go over there. I can't wait. Well, I've been watching sort of the data come in from our our Spotify. Yeah, and like Germany, Germany is like our second largest territory right now. Okay, you know? and yeah. UK. Yeah, so you know they're picking up on it. But I think Europe, Europe in general, like heavy bands, right? Yeah, and and obviously Death Punch is very big over there. And they seem to be picking up on what Flat Black is doing. So I, I mean, I'm I, I'd like to go there now, you know. Okay. But uh, patient. <laughs> M- maybe a Sweden Rock Festival. I, yeah. No, I want to do all of it. I have friends in in Sweden that uh, you know that are uh, run the Death Punch fan pages and all that. And then they're oh, yeah. and I talk. And they're like, well, "You gotta come over here," you know. Oh yeah. So I I can't wait. I can't wait. I think that uh, I watch Corey Taylor's over there right now. Mm-hmm. And he's playing these massive shows. He's it's just it's working over there so well for him that I just uh, I can't wait to go over there. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, I mean, well, in Europe, but Sweden specifically, which I know best, is it never whenever you know rock music kind of faded in other countries. Sweden and Scandinavia was always always not nothing. I mean, like all these different bands that didn't tour so much in the US or South America, they still came to Europe because it was always sold I agree. out. Yeah. I agree. And I think that as as difficult as it may seem in the beginning, it's worth the investment. Yeah. Because you don't want to let years and years and years go by and just work North America yeah. and then take a shot at you. Start right. working it right from the beginning. And that way, you know, you're building both uh, territories at the same time. Yeah. No, I think it's a lot more work. It's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's how, I mean, European bands who have been coming back to the U S all the time, they, they gain, you know, popularity. And I mean, you have a good example, Rammstein, they kept going, even though there were 50 people on the shows in the U S but now they have, you know, arenas, right? A stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Stadiums. Yeah. yeah. Stadiums. Yeah. Yeah, and same thing with bands like Amon Amarth and Sabaton and Avatar. They just yeah. keep you know coming back, and they you've you know, got to. Yeah, I mean it's a lot. It's a lot more work to 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 service the world. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but it's good work if you can get it. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's that's the whole purpose of well, not the whole purpose, but just part of the the joy of being a musician, right? To be able to out, go out oh, play yeah. everywhere. Well, I tell you. There's there really is no greater satisfaction than inventing something and then delivering it to the public and watching them pick up on it yeah. and you know and and respond positively to it. That's a real sense of um, satisfaction, you know. Yeah, it's hard, but if you get it right and and people get it, it's yeah. just there's no feeling. It's just awesome. Everything that's happening with Flat Black is such a buzz. I wake up early, so excited to turn the internet back on and see what people are saying. <laughs> it's cool stuff. Yeah, it's good. Uh, we, we're happy for you. It's just exciting. And uh, another question I wanted to ask as well is that so, so many people I know, they have been obviously writing music since they were kids, like yourself. I think you started when you were six years old, right, playing guitar? 
That's right. Do your homework, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I didn't but, know your brother. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> No, but so, so for example, um, another Swedish guy, Ingve Malmsteen, he, mm. he has been reusing riffs he wrote when he was like 15 years old on albums, you know, even as late yeah. as 2000s, right? Do you have, did you reuse any riffs on this album, Dark Side of the, of the Brain, that you can remember? Okay. Yeah. Yes, actually. Oh, yeah? Um, and I haven't told anyone this yet, but the, uh, nothing to sum. Okay. Nothing. Nothing to Some was written for the F8 record. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. And um, it got, nobody wanted to use it. I got thumbs down. Okay. So I'm like, okay, fine. Let's stick it back in the folder. Come back <laughs> for that later. So we have a scoop here then. Yeah. <laughs> the first one you told. You're the first one. I've never, I haven't said that to anyone else because I, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to cause any problems or attract any drama from haters or any of that shit but right but I, I i was so excited when i had this track i'm like dude check this out <laughs> and i just think that um i think that it came in too late and everyone was burnt out and they it, and and that was a big part of why i got kicked out kicked back but it's very frustrating for me yeah because because i'm like come on this is fucking sick right when, when you feel no. like this is going to work really well but then you get shut down it's yeah i'm like don't run out of gas yet. Just keep going. <laughs> you know, this is better than a, a couple of things I brought in four months ago. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. But whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Everything has a reason, right? It does. And I mean, now we have it on the, the new Flat Black album. So it's... With it's Corey Taylor, you know. Say, say that again? With Corey Taylor on it. Oh, oh right. That's the, I re was reading about that well, one. Yeah. Timing is everything. Yeah, it <laughs> is, you know? right? Well, the, the irony is... Yeah, Corey kicked that song out in eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, wow. I mean, I'm being, I'm exaggerating, but the thing no, is, course. like, Corey just fucking, he just does Corey, and it's fast and it's cool, and, uh, and I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> he's a genius. Yeah, he, he really is. You have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> he's a brilliant musician. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so speaking of, of songs here again, I, I'm just so curious because, you know, I've been around rock and metal and we, we know so many people around the world. So a couple of our friends, they have written songs for big bands, like huge bands. And um, yeah. they wrote 100% of the song and then presented it to the band. And the kind of the, the CEO of the band, like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have publishing rights. So I'm going to be a co-writer. Co on this song, even though you wrote everything, but no one will know that. So have that happened to you with songs in the past that can, uh, people take credit for your songs? I don't think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. I don't think so. I'm also, I'm pretty sharp in the business department. Yeah. And so I sort of get all that stuff clarified on the way in. So there's no surprises. Yeah. You know, um, having said that, if I'm sitting in with Bad Wolves or whoever and we're writing something, I actually don't give a shit. I I take myself out. This is I'm helping my friends. Oh, they yeah. ask me if I want to do something. I donate, you know, my energy and then we decide on a I let them sort of decide what splits should be. You know, okay. I sort of let go of it. If I'm invited in to help somebody, I sort of let go of that whole thing. And thank God to this day, I've always been treated fairly when I take that approach. Like, you know, I this is for you. And I trust that you'll treat me fairly when it comes time to making the decision on who did what, blah, 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 blah. And if it didn't, you know, it, it's okay, you know. Yeah. It also depends if it's a friend of yours or if it's if you're hired to be to do something. Right. 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 Uh, yeah. Which it's not meant to contradict what I just said about being clear on the way in. Sometimes my approach is just to like, you know, not to spoil the tone of the session by like, well, here's my policy. Let's just, let's see, create something first. Yeah. See if it even gets used, you know? Yeah. Sometimes that's, that, that you have to take that method. You know? Got it. Yeah. And uh, so when it comes to gear, I, I know you have the, uh, the, the Gibson Explorer, your signature module model and a, it used to be available, the Epiphone, but it sold out everywhere because I, I was trying to find one <laughs> at some point. But do, so the first question is about 
is it going to be uh, like a new limited release of a enhanced version with your new pickup? Uh, the what is it? Pariah, Pariah, yeah, yeah. Pariah, yeah. Pariah. Yeah, yeah. Is that a um, plan? Well, maybe you well, can share uh, it. Yeah. No, no, I can share it. Uh, so I've been I've been in communication with Gibson on the heels of Flat Black sort of coming out, you know, and uh, I want I'm projecting this into the universe, but I want to do a new signature with them. Okay. And and and, it, and it's not off the table. It's it's definitely a possibility. Right now, they're sort of mono focused on Dave Mustaine, and he's doing a bunch of stuff and and. And uh, so, but they, you know, I, I actually sent my number one explorer, the black and white one that's all distressed. I had I left that with Gibson. They had it for like six months, and they did a, they did a three D scan of it. So they have a way of like they put it inside this hermetically sealed scanning box, and the fucking computer and all uh, <laughs> it scans every nook and cranny of the thing. So they have a digital file of my guitar down to the nick, you know. Oh shit. And then I got it back. So, you know, we're talking about that. I, I, I think that it spooked them a little bit because my, my signature, my Explorer, I, have, I don't even know where it is, but it's so custom that they're like, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff on here that's re- going to require a lot of customization. Like, <laughs> but yeah, that, well, if, if the, well, look, the, the, uh, if we get to do an Epiphone one, that'd be great too. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I'll, I will tell you though that right now we're giving away a uh, signed Epiphone Explorer, mine, the red one, uh, back here. It's like this, but signed. Yeah. Um, I saw that, yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're running a contest where um, I don't think you ac- actually have to buy anything or do anything. You just enter to win. It's part of a um, a promotion to draw attention to the release of the album. Oh yeah. Well, that's smart. I mean, market all marketing is good, right? So. Yeah. I, yeah. I wish I had a link in front of me, but I'm pretty sure if you go to my Instagram page and go through the links, yeah. it says guitar giveaway in the links. I, I saw it actually. I, I actually entered as well. So <laughs> of course you did. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because actually a couple of days ago I was on Reverb and looking for for gear, and uh, I, I saw a couple of used Gibson uh, of your your right. signature model. But well, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a little secret. There are no Epiphone Explorers in, available anywhere. They're gone. Every, yeah. every single one is gone. So when we talked to the label about doing a giveaway, I actually had to buy one <laughs> off Reverb used <laughs> to give it away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's ridiculous. You know, I, have, I only have one, and it's that one, and I'm keeping it. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Yeah. And speaking of signature guitars, I saw on your Instagram uh, you were playing um, the Henrik Donhage Charvel, Henrik oh, yeah. from Evergrey. Mm-hmm. So yeah. is that yours, or did you just test it? Or no, I bought it. Oh, you bought it? Yeah. I have a I have a guitar acquisition syndrome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I yes. have the same guitar actually. Too. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I do. And, and as a matter of fact, Henrik is one of our closest friends, and. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, good. Yeah. So, have you seen the, the videos or footage when he has a red one? Mm-mm. So, he has a, a new relic model. This is one of a kind. Mm-hmm. And oh. it's like red and gold, but it's still the same, you know, reverse headstock and, and stuff like that. And is it, it's I not mass produced yet, though. It's not. And, um, uh, and I can't tell you if it will, but uh, <laughs> he's going to be at NAM this year or next year. So oh, I can tell cool. you that. Yeah. Oh, good. I'll go with you then. Yeah. I mean, and <laughs> he's probably going to come back to us afterwards. He and him and his wife uh, hang out. Oh, that's awesome. Vegas. To Vegas. So, yeah. Oh, great. We should have dinner then. Yeah, we should. We should. Yeah. So yeah, last he year he commented after NAM, on my post. He said mm-hmm. he said awesome because I was sitting there playing oh, yeah. the guitar. <laughs> yeah. um, like, that's a really cool axe. I mean, I know a lot of. They, I I don't think they can keep them in stock. I think that thing, like Richie Sambora bought it. Yeah, I bought. It. I, mean, Andy I think Sneep a lot of people think bought that. it too. Yeah. Oh, okay, there you yeah. go. Yeah, I mean, good for him though. Because yeah, he, that cool he's axe. Well, I noticed that Charvel coincidentally released their own line of just dis- heavily distressed. Yeah, Char- You notice that? Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> that yeah. was. That's no coincidence, man. <laughs> 
Yeah, probably inspired by by Henrik's guitar. Yeah, you you think? <laughs> <laughs> so again, I want to come back to the members uh, of the band. Uh, so you didn't know them, but how did you find them? D- did you have like a audition or what happened? <laughs> well, I went uh, <clears throat> first thing I do when I when I need help, I spread the word. I basically call up every producer, manager, musician, anyone that I know that's in the industry. I get the word out there big time. Um, do you know anyone? And I've I had a lot of people sort of coming up with names and numbers and check this guy out, check that guy out. That last couple of years, but um, you know, I at one point in my life, I was that younger musician that was looking to get scooped up into a cool, serious situation. Yeah. So I know that they're out there. You just have to look. You know, you just have to start looking. Um, there are there, there's a guy that has a service in LA where you can literally pay to have him uh, search musicians in his database. Um, and ironically, I mean, I got thousands of bass players and drummers and all that, but but it didn't produce any results that I thought were right. Okay. And every guy that is in Flat Black came from a referral from another musician or a friend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, because we we. We always look. We, we are fans of the music, obviously, but we're also fans of the looks. So we like okay. when people, you know, dress up, if you will, and you know, look well, cool, right? Image, you know. Yeah, image. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> whether it's tattoos or clothes, whatever it may be, we love that. And uh, this band you have now, they look amazing. I mean, I was looking at the bass player. I'm like, he looks like a young <laughs> Zach Wild. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I've heard that before. Yeah, he, he's got the uh, that the whole vibe. Right? Yeah, the, the blonde hair, and it's like, yeah. but you guys look so cool. And uh, me, us as fans, when we go to shows, we we want to see the image, like you said, Shay, and we want to, you know, see people make an effort, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of coming out, you know, in their, yeah, you know, and the chemistry they all all yeah. you guys have on stage as well, or in the videos that you could see. I look for the chemistry as well. I mean, I just, yeah. you know, you, people, when the audience wants to see that, you know. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I mean, it's uh, it's not unlike, you know, I've been putting bands together my whole life. And if if there's one thing I think I'm good at, I can put together a good band. Mm-hmm. You know, I've done it so many times. Um, and I can tell just from playing with people for a short period of time, I can tell this is going to be great on stage. We're going to look great. We're going to sound great. We're going to interact well on stage. Mm-hmm. I can just tell. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. I mean, the look is the bonus, you yeah. know, yeah. but I, I said this in an earlier interview, but I, I was looking for winners, you know, mm-hmm. and winners tend to have a personality where they care about the whole package. Yeah. You know, they take right. they're healthy mentally and physically and they care about they they have self-respect and they want to be you know on their a game and and uh you know i i didn't build a band to that was going to be a um just on looks or anything like that that's no. kind of i got that by default because i found certain personalities from guys that are just winners you know yeah no, that's that's super cool. And, and you have to mesh well, you know, if you're going to be spending yeah. half of your life together like a family, you know, you have to yeah. that, in a bus. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everyone, everyone in uh, everyone in the band is sober. Okay. Um, that wasn't necessarily a requirement, but it it was a coincidence, you know. And so that has <laughs> that's made it pretty smooth sailing. Mm-hmm. You know, the, all these guys are, I get up off the bus. I'm like, where is everybody? Well, you were, you were sleeping. They went to the gym without you. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> On tour, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, hardcore dudes, right? So um, keeps me young, you know? Yeah. And that's just proof, proof to, you know, the dedication and professionalism that you, you want to, you know, perform well, whether it's yeah. in the bus with the band, band members or with the crew or on stage. It's just that, you know dedication like you said winners yeah. that's a really good winners. good word to use for that yeah yeah well we all want to win right yeah <laughs> we all want to win i mean every day i wake up i i'm like i want to sell software <laughs> <laughs> Yay. well I, i'd rather play guitar on stage but wow <laughs> i hear you yeah <laughs> it didn't happen <laughs> 
Um, so just I don't want to hold up you too long here, but we what we wanted to you know ask you. So you now after a tour, and what is the best way to support Flat Black except for just you know going to the shows and buying CDs? And is there anything you you would like to suggest for the fans? Uh, I would say tell a friend, you know, yeah. um, because it's it's out of my control. Everything that happens from here on out, it's it's out of my control. I can only make good records, you know, or try to make good records, mm -hmm. records that I like, you know. Um, and uh, if people like it, it's a bonus. If they don't like it, that's okay too, because I did it for myself, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, just I noticed that the thing is growing at a great rate, and I just can't help but think that not a lot of people know about the band yet. I had somebody commenting. On, somebody commented on something this morning said are you telling me he's not in that band anymore <laughs> please tell me he's not in please tell me this isn't true so i don't think people even know that i'm not in that band anymore you know oh wow interesting yeah yeah i mean i guess it's because some people they may be clueless to begin with but also they don't they don't follow you know yeah, the, well, the news yeah that yeah. closely yeah. yeah i mean they're, I got, they're they're basic fans but they're not like die hard fans so they're not they yeah, don't well, follow every little thing so yeah i got people people sending me dms going i'm going to be in spain tomorrow can you get me on the list i'm like i'm not in that band <laughs> <laughs> wow. you know what i mean <laughs> yeah you know? and speaking of that getting on the list uh, you you must hate that i mean because there's so many people like even asking us, can you get us on the list for that band? Well, we, we don't even know them. How, <laughs> we are not in, even on the list. And I know. Well, just buy the ticket, God damn it. Yeah, I mean, having said that, uh, with Flat Black, I think we're going to try to do something a little different. When possible, I want to sort of have a, like a, a gathering room. So if there's anybody that we know or friends, we can just put everybody in sort of like the fish tank. Mm -hmm. And that way... They're not in our dressing room, which can get a little weird and crammed. But we have a, a like a, an adjacent room where you could stick a bunch of people that you want to say hi to. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I, we I never did that before, so uh, I think I mean I, Disturbed does that. I remember going to see them at T-Mobile, and they just had a big hospitality room with drinks and food and stuff, and all their guest list people would go into that room and wait for them to dry off, and they would come and hang out till they didn't want to hang out anymore. And, and I thought, well, this is a great idea. That way you could see everybody, yeah. but yeah. they're on, on, on top of you. You know, they're over here, and you can go and mingle and then split, you know? Yeah. No, it's a good idea. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the possibility to network between friends or friends. Yeah. Friends, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah, yeah. That's always so, good. It's all, it's all about people, man. Yeah. The whole industry revolves around how do people feel. That's you true. can either enhance their feeling or ruin it. <laughs> and ruining it is not advised. <laughs> <laughs> it's never recommended, right? <laughs> no. 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 Yeah. No. Well, thank you, Jason. Really a pleasure, you know, getting the chance to talk to you about this new album. And as you know, we are fans and we're going to keep doing reactions. We're going to come to the shows whenever mm -hmm. you, you're around where we are. <laughs> well, I was looking forward to this one. So thanks, you guys. I'm glad we finally got a chance to talk. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for your time again. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you soon. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.